Salut! Comment ça va? In French, that means hey. How's it going? My name is Donna and I spent two weeks enjoying amazing food, dance, and music in the beautiful kingdom of Morocco. For those of you who don't know, Morocco is an Arabic and French speaking country that is located in the western part of North Africa. I live in the Medina of Rabat, which is the second largest city and capital of the country. Today, I would like to help you virtually cross the cultural border outside of your American classroom into a classroom full of Moroccan children who come from very precarious situations. Close your eyes. Think about some of our basic human rights that we generally have access to on a daily basis. Pause this voice thread for about a minute and write down what comes to mind. Raise your hand if you wrote down food. It's nice to be able to go to sleep on a full tummy without having to worry about whether or not you're going to have access to food the next day. Did anybody write down water? Clean water at that. Clean water to drink. Clean water to take a shower. What about shelter? A place to call home. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people your age who don't have access to these basic necessities. The video that you're about to see provides you with a visual example of a young boy roaming the streets of Morocco. As you're watching the video, reflect on some of the key points that this woman brings up. I had the opportunity about five years ago now to live in Morocco for a year as part of my degree as a year abroad, studying Arabic there. And when I first came across the situation of street children, it did shock me when children came up to me and begged for money. And I went about my daily business, studying, doing what I had to do. Then I came back to the UK and forgot about it and there was nothing more to it. But after going back to visit Morocco, when I hadn't been there for two years, I noticed a child, a small, a small boy, he was about 10, 11 years old. So I went up to him and I started speaking to him. And I was just like, what's your name? How old are you? He turned out to be 11 years old. Oh, um, why do you live on the streets? Where's your family? His mom lived in the same city, but he hadn't seen her for five years. Then when I came back to the UK, that's when it hit me that everything's relative. You don't think about these children unless they're your child or your brother. You're not going to think about them. You will forget about them. But one day I was sat next to my younger brother, and he was 11 at the time. And I thought to myself, well, if this was my younger brother, would I not do everything in my power to help him? And they, they are our brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter which country they're from or which origin they are. They sniff glue because it numbs the hunger pains and because it numbs the pains that if they're feeling cold and also because if they're sexually abused, if they're high all the time, they're not going to think about it or if they're involved in child prostitution, they're not going to think about it. So it's a vicious circle. They're sexually abused and then they're sniffing glue to forget about it. As you can tell in the video, Despite the fact that Rabat is considered to be one of the most progressive and relaxed cities in the country, many of the social issues of Morocco are magnified in such a large city. Out of the almost 32 million people that live in Morocco, 200,000 of them are beggars, and 11% of that 200,000 are under the age of 16. As it is illegal to have children out of wedlock, 
Many children end up in orphanages or fending for themselves on the street, struggling for survival. That's where the Moroccan Association of Assistance to Children in Precarious Situations come in. Their aim as a charity organization is to help street children in Rabat. They have a vision that every child deserves a family and a good home, regardless of their background, situation, or circumstances. So my mission there as a volunteer was to incorporate fun interactive learning activities that challenge them to build good teamwork skills, character, sportsmanship, confidence, etc. We did things that basic Americans would do in a school setting like duck duck goose, hand clapping games, tag, and soccer just to name a few. This slide and the next two slides are just some images and a brief clip depicting typical activities that were used in this program. While engaging in these activities, we gave them lots of love and attention with hugs, high fives, and cheers. Their smiles and laughters of joy were truly priceless. In addition to basic access to education, the association also offers the students this awesome opportunity to enroll in circus school. I thought it was so cool when I heard about it. The circus school was created when the organization first started where trainers from France would come in to teach these street children some basic acrobatic skills. Now you're probably wondering, how the heck could such a program contribute to the well-being of a child? Hmm, well, that's a good question. Pause the voice thread and take some time as a class to discuss some reasons as to how this could contribute to the greater well-being of a child. Well, here's the answer. Through this form of expressive art, these children are able to gain knowledge of and respect for one's body and self-confidence. Think about it. They are finally being recognized by audiences and people after having been more or less rejected and ignored by society for such a long time. In essence, it teaches them to become true citizens through development of friends and solidarity. As we wrap up this session, pause this thread and jot down two or three things that were surprising to you. Why were they surprising? The main takeaway that I would like for you to have gotten from this thread is that safeguarding children is a global priority. We shouldn't just address these issues here in Morocco, but everywhere in the world. Although we live in a pluralistic world full of cultural differences, the truth of the matter is that each and every one of us share basic universal human rights to education, food, water, shelter, and the list goes on. I learned so much from these students as they taught me how to appreciate the little things in life that bring us joy and happiness. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.